Today's video is going to be all about my most worn fragrances of 2023 so far. So if you wanna hear more about the fragrances that I have been reaching for the most, then please keep on watching. Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel if it's the first time you're visiting. Thank you so much for joining me today. As I already mentioned in the intro, today's video is going to be all about my most worn or most reached for fragrances in 2023 thus far. Now, I just wanna caveat that with, I of course have a pretty large collection and not only that, I'm continuously sampling fragrances every single day. So to reach for a fragrance more than two, three times in a month is quite a lot for me. A couple of these I reach for a little bit more than that, but I don't necessarily have a signature scent. I do want to have a signature scent, but because I'm trying out so many fragrances, it is actually really difficult for me to have one. However, there is one fragrance in this list which I would kind of class as my signature scent for 2023. So now that's out of the way, let's get started on my most worn fragrances of 2023 so far. First up, we have Galange Spiritueuse Double Vanille, and I absolutely love this fragrance from Galan. Now, I put off adding it to my collection for the longest time due to the price point of it. I had sampled it a few times in store and I wasn't necessarily blown away by it. It's a quite soft and gentle vanilla. And I was like, is this really worth the price point? Well, of course, the Dent will probably tell you, yes, for me, it is worth the price point. I absolutely love Spiritueuse Double Vanille. Now, this Dent is actually pretty substantial for me. As I've already mentioned, I don't reach for fragrances that often in a month. And I've had this one, oof, maybe six months. So this is a good Dent for me. And... I just absolutely love this. I would go as far as saying this is the most perfect, everyday, easy reach vanilla fragrance that I feel like someone couldn't dislike. I mean, I might be wrong in that, unless you really dislike vanilla fragrances. But to me, this is a very soft, airy vanilla. It's got a kind of vanilla bean ice cream vibe about it, but it's not heavy or cloying in any way. It's more light, airy, and breezy. I wouldn't call this a gourmand vanilla. This is a very grown-up, adult vanilla fragrance, in my opinion, and I just absolutely love it. I'm not going to rave on about it too much more because I've got a lot more fragrances to get through, but yeah, I absolutely love Spiritueuse Double Vanille by Galan. It's definitely one of my most worn fragrances of 2023. Next up, we have Madurai by by Memo Paris and this one has taken me by surprise a little bit. I didn't think I would reach for it as much as I have been this year. It's one of Memo's newer releases and I just think it's absolutely incredible. Sintra gets a lot of attention and a lot of hype but my preference personally, I think Majorai is nicer than Sintra, dare I say that. And the dent has made me realize that I do really love this fragrance. And I know it's not a huge dent, but I'm not an oversprayer. I do roughly three to five sprays, so do bear that in mind too. And I just think Madurai is really, really special. In essence, it's a fruity floral, but it's a lot more complex than being a traditional fruity floral. You get a beautiful kind of tart juiciness, a peach note, I believe, is in here. And then you've got lots of jasmine, and that jasmine is creamy and it's gorgeous. And then there's a little bit of earthiness in the base to balance out the sweetness. I do actually have a dedicated review of Madurai on my YouTube channel if you do want to check out this fragrance a little bit more in depth. But yeah, I really, really love Madurai and I'm curious to see how much more of a dent I'm going to add in it by the end of the year. Okay, next up we have Initio's Musk Therapy. Now this is the fragrance that I would consider to be my signature scent of the year thus far. 
I am just really drawn to musk therapy. There is something about this that I love so, so much. And I know on paper, this isn't the most exciting fragrance. And I'm sure many of you have tested this one and some of you probably aren't blown away by it, but then there's other people that I know absolutely love it and swear by it. And it's just one of those fragrances. It's a musky, slightly fruity fragrance that smells extremely clean. There's some light florals in here as well. And this fragrance just feels very me. It's the type of composition that I'm really drawn to and it is definitely my everyday scent. When I don't know what to wear, I just instantly reach for musk therapy and that is why I say it's the closest thing to being my signature scent and it's the fragrance within this list that I have definitely worn the most this year thus far. I reach for this multiple times a month and it's an absolute fail safe for me. I adore this, couldn't recommend it high enough. But yeah, try to sample it before you purchase it. When I tried it for the first time, I wasn't blown away. It was in store, it wasn't on my skin, but of course it's now definitely a love affair for me. So yeah, that was Initio's Musk Therapy. Next up, we have Stefan Humbert Lucas Soleil de Jeda Mango Kiss. And this one might not come as a surprise to some of you that watch my channel regularly. I absolutely adore Mango Kiss. It is probably my favorite mango fragrance in my collection at the moment. And it's also my favorite fragrance from Stefan Humbert Lucas. This is an extremely creamy mango fragrance as the name suggests but it is also very complex. So I wouldn't say this is a safe blind buy just from hearing me say creamy mango. There's a lot more going on within this fragrance. It definitely has that Stefan Humbert Lucas DNA throughout it. There's a beautiful note of chamomile in here. And yeah, it just could be challenging for some people. It has a lot of depth in there. It's definitely not just a creamy mango fragrance. Now the notes don't suggest that there's anything super deep within this composition. There's some benzoin listed, but I perceive something slightly woody, a little bit earthy. It has iris butter in here too, but definitely try and get a decant of this one because I love it. One of my most reached for fragrances this year. And I would say my friends and family that come over, this is definitely one of the fragrances that stand out the most to anyone that smells it. So yeah, Stefan Hubbard Lucas, Soleil de Jeda, Mango Kiss. Next up, we have a fragrance from Giardini di Toscana, and this one is Bora Bora. This and Bianca Latte has definitely been getting a lot of love from the brand, but there is something so magical about Bora Bora to me. Now, again, I don't think this is a safe blind buy because I've seen different reactions to this. People either absolutely love it and there are some people that just do not care for it. But me, I'm a big Ylang Ylang fan. It's got Ylang Ylang, it's got tiare flower, there's apricot, there's coconut milk, and I just think this fragrance is super delicious. It's definitely unique in composition. You have some gourmand notes in here too. There's some caramel in the base. You've also got lots of vanilla, has a little bit of amber too. And if you like fragrances, like Ylang in Gold by M. Mikalef or Oudjon Intense by Fragrance Dubois, I think you should sample this one. I'm not saying you will like it if you like those other fragrances. But yeah, I just think this is kind of like a gourmand ylang ylang or gourmand yellow flower fragrance. Lots and lots of vanilla. I get that caramel too. There's some musk and amber in the base to ground it, but you're left with beautiful waxy yellow florals in the top and yeah i really really love bora bora i would highly recommend you getting a sample of this one if you can find one i will link somewhere down below if i can find somewhere but this is definitely giving me tropical gourmand vacation love it you probably won't be surprised by this next fragrance and that is jardins de misfa by unui nomad I've spoken about this one a lot on my channel and the dent is definitely denting. For me, definitely for me, it would be a complete shock to me and anyone that knows me if I ever went through a whole bottle of perfume in a year, but 
it could happen. It could happen with Jardins de Misfer. Now granted, I made the majority of this dent at the beginning of the year. I haven't worn this as much in the higher heat. However, I absolutely adore Jardins de Misfer with everything in me. It is the most gorgeous, unique, sweet, sticky rose fragrance with some dates in here. There's some saffron. I just think this fragrance is absolutely incredible. I know many of you have tried this too and have fallen in love with it. You can get great samples from Unui Nomad. They do different size formats, which is something I really love about the brand. I've mentioned it so many times, but you can get anything from a 2ml to a 5ml, 10ml, 25ml, and it goes on from there. And it's at a great price point. But this fragrance, there is just something about it that I think is so, so special. The quality is insane. It's definitely more of a Middle Eastern sweet, sticky rose fragrance with lots of dates in there. I'm not sure I mentioned it had dates in there, but there's lots of dates in there. Highly recommend everyone sample this, especially if you like the sound of the notes. So yeah, that was Jardins de Misfa by Unui Nomad. The next fragrance I've been reaching for quite a lot is Tardes by Cana Barcelona. And this fits in with that kind of clean aesthetic that I really, really enjoy. It's got that clean, fresh kind of laundry smell about it. However, this one is a little bit more floral than something like Musk Therapy. There's lots of heliotrope in here, which gives it almost a dry, musky feeling. But you've also got some almond in here, and I would say it's more like a light almond milk. There's no marzipan vibes going on at all within this composition. There's some light florals like rose and geranium. You've got a juicy tart plum note in here. It's a little bit woody. It's definitely musky. Yeah, I definitely highly recommend checking out Tardes. If you are someone that likes that more clean, fresh scent profile, kind of clean girl aesthetic, fresh laundry vibes, but with a little bit of a twist. And yeah, Tardes is just really, really gorgeous. I would say this is more of an everyday wear kind of scent. It's an easy reach again. You could wear this to work, to the office, out shopping for the day, those kind of events. I wouldn't necessarily say this is a special occasion fragrance or a date night type of fragrance. I would definitely wear this for those types of occasion just because that's the type of scent profile that I really enjoy. But I would say this is more of an everyday type of scent. And last, but by no means least, we have Peregrina by Tamine. And this one is a slightly newer fragrance in my collection. Maybe got it about four months ago, but I've definitely been reaching for this one so much. I absolutely love this scent profile. Again, I feel like this is a very everyday, easy reach type of fragrance. You could definitely wear it for a date night too, or more special occasion. But this wears a little bit lighter on me personally. Whilst it does have some kind of deep notes or some notes that appear maybe quite sickly like caramel, to me it has this transparency and this lightness to it where it's not overbearing in any way. This fragrance definitely transforms on my skin too. It kind of, I don't want to say disappears, but then suddenly I'll get this big waft of it. It's kind of a little bit of a silent assassin on my skin. I don't know what it is about this. And it's a sweet kind of, I love it. I love Peregrina so, so much. It's sweet, it's floral, it's feminine, it's girly, it's everything. It is everything to me. I really, really enjoy this. I hope they maybe come out with an extra in the future, because I think that would be really cool. There's rose, jasmine, gardenia, you've got vanilla, you've got caramel, there's some ylang ylang in here. Lots of amber, there's some musk, but to me it's quite a sweet fragrance. You definitely get that caramel, you definitely get that vanilla. I get kind of a sugary vibe from it too, and I mostly get sweet florals. It's rose, but it's not too rosy, if that makes any sense. I wouldn't say it's like a traditional rose, it's definitely young, fun, and flirty. 
Anyway, I've spoken about this one a lot on my channel. So that was Peregrina by Tamine. So there was another fragrance that I haven't included in this list and it is Fleur Narcotique by Ex Nihilo. And the only reason I haven't included it in this video is because I've got a brand new 100 ml bottle. I used to have a 50 ml bottle if you've watched any of my previous videos and it was my wedding day scent too. But because my 100 ml bottle is brand new there's absolutely no dent and even though i could have explained it just as i have right now it just felt weird holding up a full bottle saying my most worn scents of 2023 i hope that makes sense but fleur narcotique would definitely be up there too and if you missed what fragrance i wore for my wedding day this year fleur narcotique was my big day scent. I also had a separate legal ceremony too, but Fleur Narcotique was my big wedding day fragrance of choice. So that was it for my most warm fragrances of 2023. I hope you enjoyed this video, but what I want to know, and it's the same thing that I always want to know, is your feedback. What fragrances have you reached for the most in 2023 thus far? please do share them in the comments below because you know I love finding out your fragrances and your recommendations because I have found some of the best recommendations through the comments section, some of my favorites in my collection, so please do keep them coming. Thank you so much for joining me today. It's been a pleasure as always. I hope to see you in a future video to come. Thank you so much and goodbye.